So good morning, and uh, I will try to make it rather short because we are slightly behind the time. And my topic is uh, left atrial appendage closure. Uh, these are my conflicts of interest. I showed it already yesterday. Uh, you know that left atrial appendage is a, a complex structure with neurohumoral activity, and it can be visualized by several imaging methods, specifically transesophageal, like a CT or MRI. And out of all thrombi which are in left atrium, almost every thrombus occurs in left atrial appendage, 92%. So this is the locus minoris resistentiae for the discussion we are running today. These are the morphologies, as mentioned by previous speaker. The chicken wing morphology is the most risky one for clotting. Uh, why we are considering to occlude the left atrial uh, appendage? Because it is source of emboli, because occlusion or removal surgically may decrease the risk of systemic embolization, uh, and it might be an alternative to oral anticoagulation in patients with high bleeding risk, and it might be an additional treatment on top of oral anticoagulation to reduce the risk of stroke in the most risky patients, for instance, those who have stroke recurrence while on anticoagulant treatment. These are the types of occluders. You have seen them many times, I guess. Uh, and the, the one of the most frequent uh, and with the uh, largest experience from randomized studies is Watchman occluder. And here you see also the scheme, how it is implanted um, per, uh, percutaneously. And uh, there is also an option uh, to close the left atrial appendage surgically uh, with, uh, with this artery clip or to remove it surgically, of course, to cut it off. Uh, what are the potential indications for left atrial appendage occlusion in patients with atrial fibrillation? We can uh, consider it, and I, I, I should stress, and I will come to the guidelines at the end, that uh, th this is not yet clear, so there is ongoing research on this topic. Uh, we, should con we can consider it for secondary stroke prevention in patients with failed oral anticoagulation, so patients who have ischemic stroke while on oral anticoagulant treatment. We can consider it in patients who have severe bleeding complications during oral anticoagulant treatment. We can consider it as alternative to oral anticoagulant treatment in patients with high bleeding risk. Uh, we can consider it on top of oral anticoagulant treatment to, patient, uh, to further decrease the risk of stroke recurrence, as I mentioned uh, just uh, in the previous slide. And in primary stroke prevention, we may consider it for patients with high bleeding risk and high risk of stroke. I'll show you briefly a case from our center. This is a male, 61 years old, with three small strokes while on three different antithrombotic drugs. Uh, he had first paroxysm of atrial fibrillation in 2010. Uh, then he had transient ischemic attack while he was on aspirin. So the treatment was changed to warfarin. And two years later, or one and a half year later, he had another transient ischemic attack while on warfarin. So the treatment was again changed to dabigatran. And three years later, he had another stroke, small stroke this time, while on dabigatran, and transesophageal echo revealed spontaneous contrast in left atrial appendage. So this patient underwent left atrial appendage closure, and by now he has no further stroke recurrence. This is the angiogram of, uh, of the implantation, and this is the echocardiographic picture of the occluder in place. What is the published evidence? Uh, Pro Pro PROTECT AF trial published in uh, 2014 showed promise from, uh, for this uh, watchman device. You see the benefit on this slide. And PREVAIL trial showed uh, that it is at least non-inferior. And there was a meta-analysis published and this meta-analysis found that there were fewer uh, non-procedural bleedings. Uh, and uh, had also fewer hemorrhagic strokes. And there was another meta-analysis 
and uh, left atrial appendage occlusion in this meta-analysis appeared to preserve the benefits of oral anticoagulant therapy for stroke prevention in patients with AF, but the current evidence is of low quality. So we have some data, but the data are scarce and not completely convincing. Uh, this study, uh, I will skip in the respect of time, uh, this study was analyzing uh, the uh, bleeding after uh, left atrial appendage occlusion compared with bleeding after long-term warfarin. And uh, it was more than 1,000 patients with follow-up three years. And there was no difference in major bleeding rate from randomization to the end of follow-up. However, when uh, uh, we start observation after randomization, six months after randomization, then there was a difference. This is obvious, there is some periprocedural bleeding. So basically, the longer you follow these patients, the greater chance for the benefit of a left atrial occlusion uh, you, can, uh, you can have. Uh, what say the ESC guidelines about this? Uh, left atrial appendage occluding devices may be considered in patients with clear contraindications for oral anticoagulation treatment, and the uh, indication is rather weak to BC. So it is still, still uh, debatable. And these are the data from PROTECT AF trial, which I have already, already showed you. And uh, this is uh, the, the final recommendation in the ESC guidelines that uh, left atrial appendage occlusion may be considered for stroke prevention in patients with AF and contraindication, e.g. Uh, in those with a previous life-treating bleed, bleed without a reversible cause to be B. What are the perspectives? The longer follow-up, as I mentioned previously, uh, and I think the longer means at least five years, may favor left atrial occlusion as its complications occur early after implantation, while bleeding complications after oral anticoagulant therapy occur constantly over time, and even may increase with time as the patient is getting older. Randomized comparisons between device and novel oral anticoagulants are needed, and uh, randomized comparisons uh, of device versus surgical left atrial appendage closure are also needed, because surgical approach is also an uh, interesting approach, which I could not mention here much because of time. And uh, this is the study which we are now ongoing, and Pavel Osmanchik, who was uh, the speaker in the discussion in the morning, is leading this study. This study is running in uh, 10 Czech centers and is randomizing patients uh, with atrial fibrillation and very high risk. Uh, they are really a very high risk group, and uh, they are randomized to uh, left atrial appendage occlusion or apixaban treatment. Thank you. Thank you, very interesting. Uh, I, we had two patients with, uh, were, with recurrent strokes that had uh, uh, atrial fibrillation and a thrombus in the appendix seen by uh, TE. And uh, we, we proposed them for, uh, they were well anticoagulated, uh, and we proposed them to, to be closed, the, the appendix. And they told us that uh, if you can see a thrombus in the appendix, you cannot uh, treat the patient. So what uh, would you have done, what managed of these patients? Yeah, you should first dissolve the clot and then treat them. When there is a clot, it's not possible. With the parin. To dissolve the I, I will get, go, go for heparin. But long, long heparin until it is dissolved, so sometimes two weeks of heparin. Yeah.